All right, we'll come back to uh, the fourth lesson in unit four. Again, this unit four is by far the longest um, unit. We are almost halfway through. Um, we are going to be looking at um, quadratic functions in the form y equals a bracket x minus p squared plus q. We actually saw this uh, in the previous lesson, and we are going to go uh, more deep into it. Okay, so this is what we call the standard form of the uh, quadratic function. Now, I usually don't call this the standard form because I often get confused with general form and standard form. I just call this the vertex form. And the reason why I call this the vertex form is because it gives us the vertex. Um, okay, so it's the combination of these transformations. Uh, remember, there was the value of a, and there was the value of p, there was the value of q. a tells us whether um, the graph opens up or down, depending on whether a is positive or negative, right? Or if it's wider or narrower compared to y equals to x squared graph. Okay, so if a is bigger than one, sorry, if the absolute value of a is bigger than one, then it's wide, then it's narrower. If the absolute value of a is less than one, then it's wider, okay? P recall moves the graph sideways, either to the right or to the left, and that's why our vertex will shift. Q is the part that tells us where, uh, whether the graph moves up or down. So if Q is positive, it moves up, Q is negative, it moves down. Again, that means our vertex is going to change. And that's why this tells us where the vertex is. The horizontal shift and the vertical shift movement, okay, they really just move the vertex, okay? So PQ is the vertex of the graph, okay? Uh, before we go into how to graph it, we I will show you, um, we'll, we'll actually do it backwards first, okay? So given the graph, we are gonna come up with the uh, equation of this graph right here. Okay, so keep in mind, the vertex form is y equals x, uh, sorry, a times x minus p squared plus q. Okay, so now you can see we do have a vertex right here. This is our vertex, it is negative two comma negative one. So this is our p and this is our q. Okay, so because I have that information, I'm going to plug those two values into P and Q right here. So we end up with Y equals A. We don't know what that is yet. X minus P. So be careful. P is negative 2. So it's X minus negative 2 squared plus Q. So plus negative 1. Okay, we can simplify this a little bit. This becomes X. Sorry, A times X because 2 minus sign back to back. So it's actually X plus 2 squared minus one. You can see it's being moved to the left, right? It was here, right? Remember the original parabola has the vertex at zero, zero. You can see it's moved to the left and moved down by one unit, okay? Now we still have this mysterious value of A right here that we don't know yet. Now we need to somehow figure out what that is and that's why we need to figure out another point, okay? So on this graph, this point is given to us zero comma seven. So what this tells us is that this is the x value and this is the y value, right? This is a point on the graph. So if we put zero into x and seven into y, this should uh, fit or, or, or it's gonna solve this for us, right? Because then we can solve for a, okay? So what, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna substitute seven into y. A we still don't know, but we do know at this point, x is zero plus two squared minus one. Okay, so now as long as I can solve this equation, then I have my value of a. So this will be seven is equal to a times zero plus two is two squared minus one. I'm gonna move negative one to the other side becomes eight. Two squared is four, so this is four a. So divide both sides by four, you get a equals to two. Therefore your answer, the equation of this graph is gonna be two times x plus two squared minus one. And there is your final answer. Okay, so notice how I, notice how my final answer is still x and y, right? It's not gonna be zero and seven, okay? Zero and seven is only at one instant, right? It's only at this point, right? Then that's true for x being zero and y being seven. But in general, x is still x and y is still y. But we solve for a right there. And we use this point to solve for a. You can use any point 
on the graph to solve for a. It does not have to be the y-intercept. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, if you're okay with that, there's the practice question for you to do. Good luck. All right, so again, here is the vertex. So that's our value of P and that's the value of Q. Um, you can simply plug in those two P and Q right into your uh, vertex form there, P and Q. And once you have that, again, you're still missing the value of A and we can solve for A by using another point that's on the graph. So there's my X value and there's my Y value. I plug those in and can I solve for A and there's my final answer. Okay, hopefully that's all you got as well. All right, so I think this is easier given the graph, actually it's about the same. <laughs> it's not that difficult, okay? Um, this is given the graph, come up with the equation, okay? So now example two, we are actually gonna be graphing now, okay? So here it says for the quadratic function, y equals negative two, x plus two squared plus five. We are gonna identify the direction of opening, the vertex, the equation of axis of symmetry, the intercepts, uh, this could be challenging, okay, we'll see. The domain and range, and finally, we're gonna sketch the graph, okay? So first of all, I can answer a few questions already without doing anything, okay? We can just answer the first two, three questions, actually, by looking at the uh, uh, vertex form. The direction open, this is gonna open downwards. And how do we know? Because the value of A is negative, okay? Uh, the vertex, again, PQ is the vertex. Be careful, it's X plus two, so the value of P is actually negative two, okay? Q is just positive five. Again, you, it's negative two because you're comparing this with Y equals AX minus P squared plus Q. Okay, it's X minus P, but this is X plus two. So that's why P is negative two, not positive two. Equation of axis of symmetry, recall this is just the x coordinate of the vertex, so x equals negative two. Okay, um, I'll leave the intercepts at the end because that's probably the most difficult one. Um, the domain and range, domain for the quadratic function is always all real numbers. Range. Now we can actually get the range by looking at the equation as well. Um, this is the vertex, right? This is the vertex. So it's either the maximum or the minimum. Since the graph opens downwards, we know the vertex is going to be the maximum. Okay, so it opens downwards, so it looks something like this. And th oh, okay, actually that's bit off. Maybe something like this. Here is my vertex, and that's a maximum. And therefore, y will have to be less than positive five, or equal to positive five, right? Because everything is going to be below that point. Okay, so the intercepts. So I'll enter part D right here. Intercepts is probably the most difficult one to do. So let's do um, y-intercept first, because y-intercept is easier than x-intercept. Y-intercept, recall, to find y-intercept, what you need to do is let x equals 0, right? So we are going to substitute 0 into x, and then we can get the y-intercept. Okay, so 0 plus 2 squared plus 5. So that's negative two times two squared plus five. That's negative two times four plus five. That's negative eight plus five. So that is negative three. So your y-intercept is zero comma negative three. Okay. Now for x-intercept, for x-intercept, you let y equals zero. Okay. So now this, Okay, well then we get this, zero equals negative two times x plus two squared plus five. This is a quadratic equation that we solved in unit three. Okay, so it's a little bit of a review here. So what we need to do is to, well, because, I mean, there are several ways to do this. Now, because it's in the vertex form, I would say that we don't need to expand this. We don't want to expand it because that's just extra step. We can just solve by taking the square root. However, before we do that, we recall we need to isolate for the uh, square term first. So I need to minus five on both sides. So I got negative five equals negative two times x plus two squared. Divide both sides by negative two. Then because both, dividing both sides by negative, so negative five divided by negative two just turn to positive five over two. And now this is a square term equals to a number. So now we can square root both sides, but then recall when you square root both sides, and when you square root the number right here, you don't forget, you need to attach the plus minus sign there. Finally, to solve for x, you just need to move the two to the left. 
So by subtracting 2, so you get negative 2 plus minus square root of uh, 5 over 2. And this is equal to x. So these are your x and your sides. Okay. Um, so now I guess we can sketch the graph. We have the vertex, negative 2, 5, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. Here's my vertex. I have, okay, I'm going to actually draw the axes. Here's my x-axis. Here's my y-axis. I will use a different color, actually. Yes. Okay, so here's my vertex right here. I know that I have a y-intercept at negative 3, so 1, 2, 3 right here. What that tells me, again, because parabola is a symmetrical graph, so from here to here, again, this is the axis of symmetry, right? Here's the line, which means it's going to mirror, it's going to be a mirror image on the other side of the axis of symmetry. So if you just count from here to here is two uh, units. Therefore, from the axis of symmetry, you just need to count two more units to the left and you will have a point right there. Okay, because it's, an, it's a mirror image. Okay, now we can get another point um, because, I mean, you can use the x-intercepts here, but I mean, they are not nice numbers, so I probably won't use them. What, uh, what I will use is I'll pick the number right next to the vertex. Recall this vertex has coordinates of negative 2, comma 5. So what I can do is I can just pick an x-coordinate right next to it. So you can either use negative 1 or negative 3. Okay, because that's right next to negative negative two. I'm just gonna use negative one. Okay, so I can just simply plug in negative one into x, and see what I get out of it. And I believe if I plug in this correctly, I should get positive three. So then that means I will have a point right here. Okay, because that's the coordinate negative one comma three. And again, because of the uh, mirror, uh, property that they are just uh, symmetrical on both sides of the axis of symmetry so then I can find another point right there okay so there is my five points that's all I need for drawing a parabola and there is my graph okay something like that okay um, hopefully this was okay um, again I think the x-intercept is probably the more challenging one to solve but again it's something that we learned in previous units so you should be fine as well Okay, so there's the practice for you to do. Good luck. All right, so let's quickly go over some of these uh, properties. The direction opening is up because it's positive a value. Vertex is 3 comma 1. Again, here's my P and here's my Q. Okay, 3 comma 1. Axis of symmetry is x equals to 3. Not a problem. Domain is all real numbers. Range is greater than or equal to 1 because it opens upwards and the vertex is right here. Oh, okay, interesting. So that's my sketch, okay? A domain range, all real numbers, range will be bigger than or equal to 1 because there's my minimum right there. Um, Winder said we can find 1, that's 5.5, not a problem, by plugging 0 into x. Now, for x-intercept, you can see, actually, if you do a quick sketch like that, you won't have any x-intercept. And you could see it right here, right? You have, once you have, you set up the equation like this, and when you try to solve for x, you end up with x minus 3 squared is equal to negative 2. Now, this doesn't even make any sense, right? Because anything squared is always positive, but this equals to a negative value. So that makes absolutely no sense. Therefore, there's no x-intercept, okay? No x-intercept. And again, if you just do a quick sketch, there you go. There's no x-intercept right there, right? You can see, which is not possible. Okay, so now we'll do our graph. And we'll sketch the graph right here. We have the vertex. Now I'm going to change it a different color. I'm going to use green this time. Change the mood up a little bit here. Okay, so we our vertex is 3 comma 1 is right here. We do know that we have the y-intercept of 5.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.5, 5, somewhere here. And 1. So again, it's a mirror image, so you just count. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three, right here. Okay, because same distance from the uh, axis of symmetry. All right, now here are my three points. I can, I probably need, I, I'm gonna need two more. Okay, so now this is three comma one. So you can pick your x value to plug into the equation right here, either two or four or even one. 
okay in this case i would actually pick one and well <laughs> the reason why is because i'll show you why i pick one instead of um two two is fine but i, I just prefer one because um because then I'll avoid decimals. You'll see in a second. So I'm gonna put one into the equation and see what I get for the y value. One minus three is negative two. Negative two squared is four. You can see 0 0.5 times four, that's a nice number. That's a two plus one. So there's a three. So I know um, I will have another coordinate at one comma three. So that is right here. And again, it's a mirror image. So I just need to count one, two, one, two, right here. And so there is your parabola right here. Okay, you're definitely more than welcome to plug in two into X and it's gonna be fine, okay? Um, but I do believe you end up with a decimal point. I think you get like 1.5 or something, which is fine, right? There's nothing wrong with that, okay? All right, so there's the practice question. All right, we have two more examples to go over and then that'll be it for this lesson. Um, I think this question is similar to uh, the first two, two graphs. Okay, well, well, let's take a look. It says the equation of the axis of symmetry of the graph of the quadratic function is x equals to 3. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick sketch. Um, x equal to 3, so 1, 2, 3. So here is the axis of symmetry. Um, we know the graph passes through the point negative 1 and negative 6. So somewhere here and phi comma zero, so somewhere, that's three, four, five, somewhere here. Okay, so that's that's really all we have, okay? That's all we know. Okay, so based on this, I am guessing, I don't know, actually. Um, well, actually, I do know, I okay. I know that there will be another point right here, okay? But we don't need that, actually. You know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, I'm guessing the graph will look something like this. I'm guessing. Obviously, it could be the other way around, right? It could be like this. Definitely a possibility. It doesn't really matter, okay? It doesn't really matter right now, okay? But at least what we do know is uh, that this is the axis of symmetry, okay? So again, by using the vertex form, a times x minus p squared plus q, what we can figure out from the information right here is we actually know, okay, erase that point right there. We know the value of P already, right? The value of P is going to be three. Okay, the value of P is going to be three. Okay, because the axis of symmetry is X equals to three. Okay, now in this case, we actually have two variables. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to plug in two, both of these two points into the equation and we'll get two equations. Okay, so I'm going to do the first one here, negative 1, comma, negative 6, and I will plug that in. So here's my x, here's my y, I'm going to call that x1, x2, sorry, x1, y1, and here's my x2, y2. Um, so I plug in my y1 there, I don't know what the value of a is, I do know x1 is negative 1. And then plus Q, I don't know what Q is. Okay, so there's my first equation. Um, I can, uh, actually, I'm going to expand this. Um, so this is negative 6 equals negative 1 minus, ne minus 3 is negative 4. So negative 4 squared is 16. So I have 16A plus Q. So there's my first equation. And then I can get my second equation by plugging in X2 and Y2. So I will do that here. So zero is equal to a times x2 is five minus three squared plus q. So then again, I can expand this. Five minus three is two, two squared is four. So I have zero is equal to four a plus q. And there's my second equation. Okay, now we have two equations with two variables. Hopefully you remember how to do this. And we did this in math 10. We are solving system of equations now. Okay, so you there are three different methods, if you recall. We can either solve by graphing, solve by substitution, or solve by elimination. Now, this case, I would suggest you, well, obviously, you can use any method you want, okay? I, I'm not stopping you from using other methods. 
However, I think this one will be the best to use uh, elimination because we can simply subtract this, these two equations because Q minus Q is zero, okay? So then, well, we just get rid of one variable like that, okay, easily. So that's why we use uh, elimination here, okay? So negative six minus zero is negative six. 16A minus four A is 12A. So divide both sides by neg uh, by 12, I get negative six over 12, which is negative one half. So there's my value of A. Now, once I solve for A, I can solve for B. I'm talking about not B, Q. Okay, I can solve for Q now by simply plugging A into one of these two equations. Now I'm gonna plug into this one right here because the numbers are smaller. So zero is equal to four times A, which we just solved, negative one half plus Q. I can simplify this a little bit. Four times negative one half is negative two plus Q. And therefore I can solve for Q by adding two to both sides. So I get Q equals to two. So there is my A and there is my Q and we already know what P is. So then we have our final answer. Y is equal to A negative one half times X minus P, which is X minus three squared plus Q, which is plus two. Okay, so there is your final answer. Okay. Um, so again, what you need to do is for these kind of question is I you know do a quick sketch of the situation. Uh, we know the axis symmetry, therefore we can figure out the value of p. Um, we know two points, and we still have two variables. Therefore, what you need to do is plug in those two points. Um, into the equation and then you get two equations with two variables and then you can solve for a and q Okay, okay last example here um, It says a cable that supports a suspension bridge is parabolic The horizontal distance between the ends of the cable is 140 meters uh, The midpoint of the cable is 14 meters below each end of the uh, the cable. Determine the equation to model this cable. Okay, now, so if we want to determine the an equation for this cable, you really need, it, it depends on how you locate this bridge. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, to make things easier, I think, this is how you should do it, okay. Um, we have a bridge and we have the cable supporting the bridge and it is parabolic. So I have my parabola right here, okay? And the horizontal distance between the ends is 140, which means this is negative 70 and this is positive 70, okay? Um, the midpoint, so here's the midpoint, right? That's the vertex, is 14 meters below each end of the cable. So this is negative 14, right? Because it's 14, uh, meters below at the end of each cable. Okay, so, well, there's my parabola, and I can come up with the equation, no problem, because I know the vertex is 0, comma, negative 14, and I have two points, so I can really just pick any point to solve. Um, you'll see in a second. So again, here's the uh, vertex form, a times x minus p squared plus q. I know my vertex is zero comma negative 14, so I can simply plug those two values into P and Q. P is zero, Q is negative 14. Again, I can simplify this a little bit. X minus zero, well, really, is just X. So X squared minus 14. Now, all I need to do is solve for A. So again, you can pick a point. You can either pick this point or that point. I like to pick the one with positive value, so I'm just gonna say 70 comma zero. So y is zero, a is still unknown, x is 70 minus 14, okay? So you can solve for a now, you can move 14 to the other side, you get, or negative 14 to the other side, you get positive 14. 70 squared is 4,900. Finally, to solve for a, you divide both sides by 4,900, and you can actually reduce this. This, I believe, is two um, out of 700, oh, so I guess one out of 350. Okay, one out of 350, and therefore we have an equation. Y equals A times X minus P. Again, P is zero, so you don't need the 
you don't really need to write x minus 0, you can just write x squared uh, minus 14. And that would be the answer. Okay, now again, back to what I said earlier. If you decide to put the bridge elsewhere, you will get a different answer. Okay, however, your a value will not change. What will change is the vertex. It's a P and Q. So let me show you quickly here. You don't have to say that it's there. You could say that, okay, so maybe the bridge is like that. So then this is 0, 0. This then would be 170, comma, 0. Halfway, this would be at 70. So this is 70, comma, negative 14, right? So then in that case, you get um, a times x minus 70 squared minus 14. Notice how this doesn't change. This does change if you solve for it because it's congruent, right? These two parabola really, it's the same parabola, just in, you know, at a different place. Ultimately, it's the same bridge. So your value of a will not change. So if you do it this way, your answer will be 1 over one, uh, 350 times x minus 70 squared minus 14. Okay, this is just fine as well. And again, you can put your bridge at a different location. You just get a different answer. Okay, um, P and Q could change. Q could change, right? I mean, this time we are saying here, I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna do more, but I'll show you. Your Q value could be somewhere here, right? Maybe you could put your vertex right here. I don't know, right? That depends on how where you wanna put it. Okay, so that's the lesson for this unit. Um, do some practice questions and let me know if you need help.